welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today I thought I would do a little bit of coloring and if you caught my video earlier when I hopped with the not too shabby shop I colored up a bunch of bacon and I thought I would do that again because it was a lot of fun and I love bacon. So um, if you missed that one I'll, I'll just recap uh, how I colored the bacon because I, I do have a fair number of Ohuhu markers now, but I could not find the exact color that I was looking for to really get that cooked bacon look. So what I did was I um, tried the technique that I think more often is used in painting, like oil painting, acrylic um, painting, and that is to do an underpainting. And Basically, it's when you lay down sort of an initial foundation of uh, color to, you know, block in a space or um, initially, you know, give some tint of a color and whatnot. And then you continue to paint uh, over top of that. Well, that's what I've done here with a very light shade of pink. If you have Ohuhu markers, what I use specifically is R110. And I used um, R110 over basically the meaty parts of the bacon strips and then that center strip that is white where like the fat would be. <laughs> I love that white. Then my second uh, coat of underpainting as it were is with a very light shade of um, a, like a tan and that color is E490 and one of the things with alcohol markers that makes them really great is that they are a, a transparent medium and so essentially when you lay down uh, one color on top of another it doesn't completely block out the color beneath it. Instead, what happens is if if both colors, if you were fast enough and both colors were still wet, so you're kind of coloring wet on wet, you're gonna get a really nice blend of the two. If you let one dry and then you um, color over top of it with another color, it may not blend quite as much, but because alcohol inks are transparent, it's going to sort of take on a tint of um, the color beneath it. So it does alter the, the color that you're coloring with, and it'll look different than if you were to just color right on top of just white. But it won't necessarily um, blend in the same way as if you were to do wet on wet coloring. So what I'm trying to achieve when I'm doing this sort of under underpainting is to kind of lay this foundation of like a little bit of a pinky, uh, fleshy kind of color <laughs> and basically trying to, you know, almost color raw bacon. And then on top of that, I'm gonna go in and actually do my actual coloring. So I've laid the foundation and then these three colors are the ones that I'm going to use to do my you know dark midtone uh, and light coloring as if you know I were gonna color anything else. So here are the colors that I used are, um, I think it was, R160, that is um, my dark. So I'm laying that down in the areas where I think there might be some shadows. So where it sort of curves down essentially, because you know how when you cook bacon, you know, the edges will curl a little, right? So when it's concave and it curls, you know, downward, that's where I think there's going to be a shadow and where it curls upwards is where I think there will be a highlight. Then with um, the next color that I'm going in with is BR2. And that is also sort of going to be my, my dark kind of, you know, darkish. And 
the reason why I have two colors that are, you know, sort of dark is because I want a reddish brown uh, for that cooked meat look. <laughs> and so, so that's why I'm blending the two, but I'm being sure to blend them wet on wet. So before um, the R160 dries, I'm, that's why I'm not coloring all of the bacon in, you know, in that first color first. I'm actually going to finish coloring, you know, one bacon strip at a time. <laughs> And that's so that I can get a really smooth blend between the light, mid, and dark. And that way it, um, it looks a little bit, and it kind of depends artistically what style you like, because I do like the comic book style of those like very well-defined sort of lines, but I'm not super good at that. So so right now I'm a little bit more comfortable, um, though not perfect, but still more comfortable with coloring where I'm trying to get like nice smooth blends between the light, the mid, and the dark. So then the uh, my mid is BR3, and that is um, where I'll go over the whole the whole strip of bacon. And BR3, so the lighter the color in alcohol marker, the more alcohol solution, base solution there is. So it does tend to kind of bleach out your colors a little bit. And that's why you see me going back in with my two darker colors, just to darken <laughs> those uh, shadows a little bit more if they got, you know, too sort of bleached out. And and then if it looks like it's it's not blended enough, like this, the transition isn't blended enough, then I'll go back in over everything with another pass with the lightest color, E490. That was the color that I used in my under painting. And so that's sort of the the gist or the approach for how I colored up all of my bacon strips. But on this card, what I thought would be really fun is to um, kind of... I, I was very tickled with the idea of the fact that, you know, I initially colored up essentially raw bacon. This is that... Um, this is that E490 that I'm just using to kind of blend blend everything out, smooth out the blends where it looks like it's a little bit um, choppy. Um, but as I was saying, I was really tickled by the fact that I was coloring up raw bacon. And so the, the idea popped into my head of trying to color up um, bacon that's been cooked to a variety of doneness. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so on the um, rightmost, that pink, that's the pink by itself. That was R110. And then next to that is R110 plus E490. And then you saw me add the um, actual coloring to, to cook the bacon up. So I am going to make a card. <laughs> this, this video isn't just going to be about the coloring, but the card is going to be really simple. And in fact, it's it's a very truly, like I kind of forget the, that this is always an option, but because I didn't have the sentiments that I was looking for in this stamp set, which is the Not Too Shabby Shop uh, stamp of the month for December 2023, I decided I'll just write my own. And so it took me a while. I, I definitely drew myself a line so that I could be sure to write uh, in a straight line because I otherwise would never be able to manage to do so. And the sentiment I wrote is, how do you like your bacon? And so I've got all my bacon strips here. The, the stamp of the month does also come with a coordinating die that you can get. And you can subscribe to, to get the stamp of the month uh, with or without the coordinating die. So that is an option. And I just, I just love, I was able to get seven. I don't know how uniquely distinct they are, but I feel like they're fairly distinct. So I um, I was able to get seven 
different shades, I guess. And, you know, in in a way, you could maybe use these as skin tones. Um, so that might be something interesting. But it it's a skin tone that definitely will have a little bit of that pinkish hue to it because of the underpainting that we did. But it, I just had a blast coloring up all of this bacon and this whole uh, concept of the card. I don't think I'll give this card away. I kind of want to keep it because I just think it's so funny. Um, but I'm going to put a little bit of um, my 3D glue gel, which is uh, by Kalal. I get this from Craft Stash or Crafter's Companion, whoever has the best sale on it at the time. And both of those are UK-based companies, so I know that that might not um, be something that everybody wants to order from, but they they do, if you are in the US, they do ship to the US, so, uh, so that is an option. And I don't know that there's an equivalent um, a glue gel that is equivalent to that that's more uh, accessible to those of us in the U.S. But the last thing I'll do to finish up this card is just write out some numbers. Now, I wish I had kept my line down there because that ended up not being straight at all. <laughs> so and that that's another reason why I, I might not give this away. But here's my final scale. So question to you watching, what scale would you be? <laughs> How do you like your bacon? Give me a number one through seven in the comments below. <laughs> Thanks so much for catching this one. And until next time, happy crafting and have a fabulous day. Bye.